The Heavenly Life by James Allen Chapter 7 Perfect Love The children of light who abide in the kingdom of heaven see the universe and all that it contains as the manifestation of one law, the law of love. They see love as the molding, sustaining, protecting, and perfecting power imminent in all things animate and inanimate. To them, love is not merely and only a rule of life. It is the law of life. It is life itself. Knowing this, they order their whole life in accordance with love, not regarding their own personality. By thus practicing obedience to the highest, to the divine love, they become conscious partakers of the power of love, and so arrive at perfect freedom as masters of destiny. The universe is preserved because love is at the heart of it. Love is the only preservative power. Whilst there is hatred in the heart of man, he imagines law to be cruel, but when his heart is mellowed by compassion and love, he perceives that the law is infinite kindness. So kind is the law that it protects man against his own ignorance. Man, in his puny efforts to subvert the law by attaching undue importance to his own little personality, brings upon himself such trains of suffering that he is at last compelled, in the depths of his afflictions, to seek for wisdom. And finding wisdom, he finds love, and knows it as the law of his being, the law of the universe. Love does not punish. Man punishes himself by his own hatred. By striving to preserve evil, which has no life by which to preserve itself, and by trying to subvert love, which can neither be overcome nor destroyed, being of the substance of life. When a man burns himself, does he accuse the fire? Therefore, when a man suffers, let him look for some ignorance or disobedience within himself. Love is perfect harmony, pure bliss, and contains, therefore, no element of suffering. Let a man think no thought and do no act which is not in accordance with pure love, and suffering shall no more trouble him. If a man would know love and partake of its undying bliss, he must practice it in his heart. He must become love. He who always acts from the spirit of love is never deserted, is never left in a dilemma or difficulty. For love, impersonal love, is both knowledge and power. He who has learned how to love has learned how to master every difficulty, how to transmute every failure into success, how to clothe every event and condition in garments of blessedness and beauty. The way to love is by self-mastery, and, traveling that way, a man builds himself up in knowledge as he proceeds. Arriving at love, he enters into full possession of body and mind by right of the divine power. Perfect love casteth out fear. To know love is to know that there is no harmful power in the whole universe. Even sin itself, which the worldly and unbelieving imagine is so unconquerable, is known as a very weak and perishable thing that shrinks away and disappears before the compelling power of good. Perfect love is perfect harmlessness, and he who has destroyed in himself all thoughts of harm and all desire to harm receives the universal protection and knows himself to be invincible. Perfect love is perfect patience. Anger and irritability cannot dwell with it nor come near it. It sweetens every bitter occasion with the perfume of holiness and transmutes trial into divine strength. Complaint is foreign to it. He who loves bewails nothing, but accepts all things and conditions as heavenly guests. He is therefore constantly blessed, and sorrow does not overtake him. Perfect love is perfect trust. He who has destroyed the desire to grasp can never be troubled with the fear of loss. Loss and gain are alike foreign to him. Steadfastly maintaining a lovable attitude of mind toward all and pursuing in the performance of his duties a constant and loving activity, love protects him and evermore supplies him in fullest measure with all that he needs.
Perfect love is perfect power. The wise, loving heart commands without exercising any authority. All things and all men obey him who obeys the highest. He thinks, and lo, he has already accomplished. He speaks, and behold, a world hangs upon his simple utterances. He has harmonized his thoughts with the imperishable and unconquerable forces, and for him weakness and uncertainty are no more. His every thought is a purpose, his every act an accomplishment. He moves with the great law, not setting his puny personal will against it, and he thus becomes a channel through which the divine power can flow in unimpeded and beneficent expression. He has thus become power itself. Perfect love is perfect wisdom. The man who loves all is the man who knows all. Having thoroughly learned the lessons of his own heart, he knows the tasks and trials of other hearts and adapts himself to them gently and without ostentation. Love illuminates the intellect. Without it, the intellect is blind and cold and lifeless. Love succeeds where intellect fails. Sees where intellect is blind. Knows where intellect is ignorant. Reason is only completed in love and is ultimately absorbed in it. Love is the supreme reality in the universe, and as such it contains all truth. Infinite tenderness enfolds and cherishes the universe. Therefore is the wise man gentle and childlike and tender-hearted. He sees that the one thing which all creatures need is love, and he gives it unstintingly. He knows that all occasions require the adjusting power of love, and he ceases from harshness. To the eye of love all things are revealed, not as an infinity of complex effects, but in the light of eternal principles out of which spring all causes and effects, and back into which they return. God is love. Therefore, than love, there is nothing more perfect. He who would find pure knowledge, let him find pure love. Perfect love is perfect peace. He who dwells with it has completed his pilgrimage in the underworld of sorrow. With mind calm and heart at rest, he has banished the shadows of grief and knows the deathless life. If you would perfect yourself in knowledge, perfect yourself in love. If you would reach the highest, ceaselessly cultivate a loving and compassionate heart. End of chapter 7